Hey, welcome back. This is Mix Kelly Fish Keeper. Hey, uh, today I'm in my fish room and I'm gonna I'm gonna rescape a tank, a 20 gallon tank that I had. This tank that I'm rescaping today is what used to be my mud guppy tank. Um, there, uh, since the last time I recorded that tank, uh, I've I went ahead and moved them out of there and uh, temporarily put them in a 10 gallon tank. Uh, and I'll show you where they're at right now. But uh, the reason I moved them is because I have some killifish that I'm trying to, that I'm trying, well, that I was reproducing, but I had them in an outdoor tub. Uh, the problem was the uh, outdoor tub uh, ended up getting a, uh, a leak. One of the corners, I guess, from being out in the sun, got a little brittle or something, and the stand must have shifted, or we've had a few, couple of windy days that, it could have been a number of things, but uh, the, pro the thing is that one of the corners cracked on it and it started leaking out of the water. L luckily, it was a slow leak, so I was able to catch it in the morning uh, and able to get those fish out of there. But uh, So now i got to put them in this 20-gallon uh, that I have here, uh, you know, which eventually I'm also going to have to be able to uh, take, uh, lower those number downs by either selling them or, or finding uh, a home for those fish. And I'll probably just keep uh, maybe uh, three three trios of, of these uh, killifish to continue uh, reproducing them. Uh, these are the uh, Phineas Mentos killifish. Uh, they're some uh, they're basically mi Middle Eastern uh, killifish. Uh, the reason I got them is because they tend to do very well here in the Arizona uh, desert. Uh, they can tolerate high temperatures. And they can go very cold too, which is kind of unique. So that was one of the reasons why I was able to keep them outdoors year-round down here in, uh, in Yuma. Uh, so, but because that tub broke down and I was kind of, I didn't really know how many I had in there. Uh, I know it's a lot because when I put them in here in this 20 gallon, I couldn't believe how many of them were in there. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set it up for them. Uh, and then eventually I'll start pulling some of the the, the fish from there and and uh, so that I can go ahead and, and sell them and then uh, and then continue to to reproduce them uh, so that's what I'm gonna do today uh, I'll go ahead and show you what it is oh what's what's a little different today is that I actually had to go a little bit old school with this tank uh, instead of using a sponge filter well I will use a sponge filter in the beginning just because it's going to allow me to uh, pretty much cycle the tank immediately uh, but after a couple of weeks of it being in there and once the bacteria has uh, been able to colonize the the inside of this aquarium I'm going to go ahead and pull it out but the main source of filtration is going to be other gravel filter uh, this is what I started using when I first got into the hobby several years ago uh, for some reason they kind of went away uh, but it appears you're kind of making a comeback, uh, but in a little different with a twist. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and not only use the underground filter, but I'm going to take advantage of this filter and set up a plenum. Uh, I've done it on the on the goldfish tank, and uh, so far I really haven't had any algae grow in there. Uh, the problem with goldfish is they're real messy. Uh, so the biggest problem that I have is just uh, just keeping up with the waste from the fish. Uh, so I want to try this because I want this. As you guys know, all my tanks are planted, or for the most part they're planted. So that's why I want to do this. I want to use this system with the plenum and uh, try to see how what kind of success I get. One of the big uh, reasons why I'm interested in this is because the videos that I've seen uh, it really helps with algae. Everybody that is that has gone to this system with the plenum um, has had zero issues with algae. So I'm going to go ahead and try it. I'll see what I learned from this. Uh, if it really is what they say it is, uh, and I'll let you guys know. So uh, if you want to come along for this, stick around, and we'll go ahead and going. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera around. Okay. So for those of you who have never seen an under gravel filter or never used one, it's real basic. What you get are these little panels. 
that are raised about half an inch so that it creates a void on the bottom of the tank. And these you just gotta put them in the bottom and the kit is complete. Uh, you come, it comes with two panels. What's gonna happen is if you notice on these correctly, uh, if you can see on here, there's no way for the water to get transferred from one panel to the other. So these are customizable. What they've done is they've done some cutout pre-cutouts where you're gonna pull these tabs out and uh, that's gonna allow the water to flow. What happens is the water will come up to the top get sucked to the bottom and then it'll flow into the next into the next uh, uh, plate and come up through some lift tubes the lift tubes are these right here there's some just plastic tubes that, that what's going to happen is the same principle as a sponge filter and uh, these would go here and uh, you lock them into place you put an air stone there and that's going to generate lift uh, traditionally on uh, on the conventional under gravel filters you would use the two lift tubes one in each corner and generate lift like that but because i am doing the plenum the plenum the way it works is that it needs very low a very slow water movement through the bottom uh, so that it has a minimal amount of oxygen so and that's going to help to consume those those extra uh, nutrients and prevent you from having uh, a lot of algae issues, especially when you start up a, a tank. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut these little tabs out. Uh, one of the modifications that I'm going to do to this is because this does have some slots in there, but I am going to use sand. I don't want the sand to go through there, so I'm going to put another, uh, these little grids uh, these mats, which are the needle, needle point mats, or they call them plastic canvases, I believe. Uh, you can pick these up at any arts and crafts store. They're not very expensive. You get about six or seven of them for about $3. And uh, what this is going to help is to prevent that sand from sliding in between these little slots in here, even though they're, they're pretty, pretty close together. It's just another layer that I'm going to put on there to prevent that from happening. Uh, and then I'll show you what other what other uh, materials I'm going to use to go ahead and, and set this plenum up. Okay, so one of the things that I need to do is to be able to make that pass through for the water under here. I need to remove these tabs that are right here. And uh, they're already kind of pre-cut pre, uh, or they're not really cut, but they tell you, they give you kind of of a guide of to follow. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a utility knife and I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove that excess material. Uh, obviously, uh, be careful uh, because you don't want to cut yourself and uh, end up injuring yourself. So, you know, just well, whatever you got in there. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest and I'll get you, I'll show you guys how these come together. So that's all you're going to do right there. Um, I guess I could turn it around and give it a once over to score it and be able to cut it. All right, so I'll go ahead and knock these out and I'll show you how to put these together. So I already finished this side and as you can see, you can see where I removed those sections, that excess plastic, and this is going to create that pass through to get that water to move from one of the from one grid to the other. So let me go ahead and do the other one. Okay, as you can see, I already finished this one too. So what's gonna happen now that we've got this one and this one, you can see where the pass through is gonna be through, right there. So we have to join both of these panels now so that they can stay together and won't move. The kit comes with uh, some retainer clips, which are these right here. And uh, you're just going to place those on those tabs right there. It'll help keep it all together. And that's real straightforward. And that's it. You just put these in there and these will keep it. These will help keep it from uh, separating and moving on you. 
and it becomes one entire plate. So this is going to go on the bottom, right in there. Uh, the next thing is uh, we're going to have to start layering our surfaces. Oh, one of the things, one of the key things for when you're making a plenum, besides the uh, materials you're going to need, is that your lift tube, you really want to keep it short because what you don't want is for it to create a lot of lift. If you create a lot of lift, you're going to get a lot of water movement. And the way this works is with very slow water movement going on in the bottom of this. So you really want to have a short lift tube. Uh, you can cut this. You only really need about an inch coming out of the, the substrate. Uh, I'm not going to cut it yet because typically what I do is when I set these tags up, I'll try to go high on the back and slope it through the front. And if I cut it right now, I don't know how high I'm going to have that in, that bank that goes from uh, that substrate. So I'm going to keep it as long right now. I can always remove it and uh, cut it down. Uh, the next thing I want to do is make sure I put the the, the little lattice work, these little plastic canvas, uh, to prevent that sand from filtering into the bottom of that uh, underground filter. Sorry. So let me go ahead and cut these to the size that I'm going to need, and I'll get back to you and show you how I'm going to do it, uh, how I'm going to place them in there. So there you go. That's what I'm going to do. I cut these down to size. Uh, I used two sheets that I had to trim the bottom off of it, and then just used a little section to cover up that other side. Um, I didn't put it over the the hole where the lift tube is going to go at because that's where the tube. I need to have that access to that. So that's what it's going to look like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and layer my first layer of substrate, which I'm going to use a uh, fine sand or, or fine gravel that I have. And that's going to be my first layer. Uh, some of the other stuff we're going to use is we're going to use a uh, kitty litter. And uh, the one you want to buy is uh, you want to get the natural clay. And uh, you can pick this up at Walmart. You want one that's uh, fragrance-free, non-clumping. It's uh, base, uh, clay-based. And then I'm going to use uh, some laterite, which is a, a iron, an iron source. Uh, this and my and the clay, and the clay together is going to, from my understanding, if I understood Dr. Novak correctly, is going to create an ionic bond with some of the uh, the nutrients that algae needs to be able to grow in there uh, also the benefit or the upside of this is since I like to plant my uh, use plants in my tanks this also provides a really good source uh, of uh, nutrients for the plants uh, the clay and the iron are both going to be uh, beneficial for the growth of these plants so there, it's a it's a plus plus when you use these substances uh, so as long as it's an iron rich uh, substance uh, you, you want to be able to use that because it, this in conjunction with the clay is what's going to help you create that that uh, that fil uh, that attraction for those ions oh, these are these are very essential for, for this to work so let me go ahead and um, lay down my first layer which is just basically a, a fine gravel that's going to act as a the very bottom layer of filtration. Uh, obviously, because the way this is going to work, the water is going to come from the top and work its way down. I want to put my very fine uh, substrate at the very bottom, and then a medium coarse and a, and a coarser at the very top. And that's uh, because that's the way you would set up a filter, anyways. You want the coarser stuff to pick up the bigger particles, and then gradually get finer and finer and finer. So that at the very bottom, you have the, the finest stuff, and that's going to help you also uh, make sure your water is very clear. So let, let me go ahead and, and add those extra layers in there. All right, this is uh, this, the fine gravel that I'm going to use. This is a gravel that was actually already... things that I was almost forgot to do was to go ahead and place my lift tube. I've already got that in place in there, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to start putting the rest of that. 
that first layer in there. Okay, that's good enough for my um, first layer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit coarser uh, gravel in there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. What I'm going to add now is going to be that clay, that uh, kitty litter. And I'm going to go ahead and just add a base of this on here. Um, it looks like I didn't have enough of that coarse gravel that I wanted to use. But this should also work as the same. If you notice, the, the granules are a little bit thicker than what that other fine gravel was. So I'm going to just use that. As far as cleaning it, uh, according to Dr. Novak, there's really no need to do it. Um, I saw him set up his, and uh, he didn't he didn't wash any of the stuff that he was using. Uh, and within a couple of hours, his tank was already clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. I did it in the goldfish tank. It took it a little bit longer, but we're talking about 65 gallons of water too. So. But eventually did get here. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and put the we're gonna use the laterite. This gonna and the way he did this, he pretty much sprinkled generously over the top of this, and uh, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. That should be good enough. Dr. Novak also has some uh, a different type of filtration called BCB bags, and basically what it is is using this same thing, the laterite and the and the kitty litter together, and you put them in little bags, and you can put them in your canister filter, and that would also help you create the same type of uh, filtration, the same benefit as what we're doing with this plenum here. Um, so that's another option. I know I've seen videos of uh, uh, Peck Tech Tanks. He, he does a video where he's using it on hang of the back filters. And uh, obviously Dr. Novak shows you how to do it on his canister filter, the way he does it. So maybe that's something that I will try for my uh, 75 gallon, since I have some leftover, and put it in that um, canister filter, since I am having a little bit of issues with uh, some algae in there. So it'll be wor well worth a try. Okay, so now I'm going to put the final layer on here. And it's basically a combination of two, that fine gravel and the coarse gravel that I had. And I'm just going to pair them up together. See what we can come up with. Now I'm going to go ahead and start placing my hardscape and figuring out how I want to escape this. finished planting the, the plants that I wanted in there for right now and to get started the to start the nitrogen cycle what I ended up doing was taking a, the sponge filter that was in there before and I squeezed it out I know it looks real dirty and a lot of turbulence but within a couple of hours this will all settle back in um, the reason that I squeezed that sponge in there is so that all that beneficial bacteria that was in the sponge gets released and and recovers the surfaces of, of what was in here everything that's in there was already in that other tank at, in there at once but 
because I took it out of the tank and it was sitting in a bucket for a few hours. I don't know. I'd rather be safe than sorry. I, um, the the beneficial bacteria on all the decorations in there, all the, the driftwood, the rocks, was never exposed to the air for a very long period of time and it was always in submerged in water. So it sh technically it should have kept the, the beneficial bacteria alive. Um, but since I have that, that sponge and I can afford to do it, I just went ahead and squeezed all that mold into this tank to help uh, speed up the process. So I'm just going to let it run for, for a couple of hours, let it settle down and clear out. And then I'll go ahead and add the, the killifish in here and uh, we'll see how they look. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. So here you go. This is what it's going to look like now. Um, I've already put the livestock in here. Uh, as you can see, the killifish are all about this area. As uh, the vegetation grows out or the plants grow out, it's going to provide more hiding spaces for them. I try to provide as much uh, places for them to, to get away from each other because the males do tend to be a little bit more aggressive to one another. Also right now, you can't really appreciate the coloration on some of these males because they're a little bit stressed out of being in here, but the dominant ones, uh, and I'll put a picture up from what I've seen on the internet, and if I can capture the one that I have in my 55 gallon, you'll see they become a very, uh, almost black with blue uh, spots on them. They look very nice. Uh, the female will look like the way they look right now, and I can get you a little bit of a close up on, on uh, some of these fish, uh, so you guys can get a better look, hold on. Here's a group of them right here. Uh, some of, I can tell that some of these guys are males because you can start seeing the, that blue coloration on their fins and uh, they tend to flash a little bit more. Uh, but that's pretty much what, what you're looking at is what the females will typically look like. Uh, I'll give it a few more days before I can start seeing which is gonna be the dominant male. This guy right here, you can tell he's a male. You can see the colors coming in in his finnage. Uh, and I've seen two or three other ones that are like that. Uh, so this is what the 20 gallon uh, Aphenius Mentos killifish tank is, is going to be. Uh, here we go. Here's one of the male right there swimming by. Uh, he still has a lot of coloring up to do. These guys are uh, egg scatters. Uh, in, in the wild, they like to have a, a lot of algae green algae, green string algae, because that's where they'll lay their eggs. Here, I'll see how that works out. When I had them in the outdoor tub, because I wouldn't touch it, uh, I had a lot of that green algae, and that's why I was able to get a lot of these guys uh, to reproduce. This is this is a totally new situation for them, and I'll see how this works out. If for some reason I see that I'm not having the success that I expect, I'll go ahead and put them out in the, I'll get another outdoor tub and put them in that. Or take a group of these guys and put them outdoors then see where I get the better result but again this is uh, my 20 gallon uh, killifish tank and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it thank you <music>